Okay, we're going to start talking today about histograms. Um, so it is a graphical display, so it's a graph. Uh, and the bars have different heights. So they use intervals or bins of data. Um, so a histogram is really good when you have a range of numbers um, as your data, whereas uh, a bar graph is better if you have categorical data. So categorical data is something like your favorite snack or your grade level or your, the country you live in. Oops. That's a bar graph, that's categorical. Um, every bar is its own category. Continuous data is a range, including decimals most times, of numbers. So say on the x-axis you want to talk about length. Well, you might have a bin from 0 to 4, and then you might have a bin from 5 to uh, 9, and then you might have a bin from 10 to 14, and so on. So it's about range. So it's any sort of measurement that can have a decimal value typically, or can get pretty fine. Um, there's also rounding involved, so sometimes we can chop off our bins at certain places. Um, but for continuous data, for stuff that can have decimals or really small increments, we, not a historical, a histogram, So let me give you an example. So there are 10 marks here, so I'm going to label these 100 all the way down to 10. And then I see I have only one that falls into this category. To be precise, this is 0 through 9. Two fall in the next group, which is from 10 to 19. And two fall in this group as well. From 20 to 29 okay so notice how I don't have any overlap like if this was a 10 that could be a error because where would you put 10 in the first one or the second one so we typically like to make sure we're not double counting anything okay so you'll see this more as we continue so there are two in the 30s four in the 40s four in the 50s four in the 60s, and four in the 70s, and then two, and then three. That's a histogram. So let's look at another one here. So uh, this is the box candy that you might buy the movie theaters where they're going to charge you a lot of money. Whereas if you go to a supermarket, you can buy them pretty cheap, like a dollar, okay? So let's take a look at uh, the cost of the candy versus the frequency. Okay, so the costs are already divided into bins of equal width. Okay, and we can label all of them in here. So this was 60 cents to 99 cents. Okay, and this was a dollar to a dollar 39. And then you can continue this process. Um, you can imagine that those would go, the next four would go there. And then you just go up to your frequency. So here's three. three one, two, three. Here's nine. It's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then went down to seven. And the next category is down to four. And the next one went up all the way back up to nine. It's a little too high. There we go. All right. So things to notice: all the um, the, the interval length is all the same between all these thirty-nine cents, um, and it ranges over the whole data set. Um, so this is a well-drawn histogram. Okay. Um, now. Sometimes you aren't given them sorted. Sometimes you have to sort them yourself. So we're just going to put the data in increasing order. Let me do that for you. 
that way we can really see like what falls into which bin. It's just three and four. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Great. So we have to come up with um, a description for the bins, right? And it could be simple to say, oh, it's zero to four, so maybe there should be four bins, four or five bins. Um, but we have to be careful when we do, say we want the first bin to go from zero to one. We have to include zero and one, right? But if we go to the next bin and we say it, it, we want it to go from one to two, I can't do this because then I'm one is in both bins. So we actually, a good strategy is just to include the bottom number and go up to the next number, but don't touch it. And this way we're covering the entire set. Like that, okay? So we got one, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to place these where they need to go. So we got two in the first bin. We have five in the second bin. We have five in the next bin. And then we only have one um, in here and one in here. All right, that's a histogram, okay? So this could be um, hours, and this is F for frequency. And then the last thing I want to talk about, now that you have an idea of how to construct one, uh, is the shape. We call this uniform. We call this symmetric. Doesn't seem like, there we go. Two M's, cannot spell today. And this is skewed. Okay, so this is uniform, skewed, symmetric, skewed. Okay, we also get for skew, we, we normally say left or right, and whichever side is down, that's the side that you refer to. So the left hand side, um, so we call this skewed left. And this one would be skewed left, and this one would be skewed right. Okay, if something's uniform, that takes priority, right? Because technically this graph is also symmetric, right? But if we have the chance to call something uniform, we call it uniform because it's a lot harder to call something uniform and it has extra properties. So we, we prefer to call it uniform if we can. Okay, so uniform is high priority. Okay, so you have these homework questions to work on. If you have questions, you just let me know.